Hey everyone, Ryan Young, Kama Jiu Jitsu. I hope you're doing well. So let's answer another question. Uh, I don't know which video this was in response to, but it was by, oh, Alish 1989 multiple offender. <laughs> You're rusty laughing back there. <laughs> he's, he's been given, I only call him that because he's been giving us, giving us a lot of questions and a lot of, uh, a lot of topics to, to consider. So I wondered if you could give your thoughts on jerk jitsu. The other day, another white belt and I were having a discussion about what is a jerk move. Recently, we had a new student that had moved from another school and they were very much into explosive moves, neck cranks, leaning the forearm into the neck while in someone's guard, etc., etc. The other white belt was incredibly annoyed about this and said it was jerk jitsu. And while I was a little annoyed too, after all, the goal is to keep your training partners, my thought was that it was a good reminder to the average person that uh, the average person is not going to play the game with you, especially on the street. So part of the responsibility rests on your ability to defend or just tap if it's really that uncomfortable. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Okay, so this is something that, uh, here's the way I look at it. There's no such thing as a dick move or a jerk move, whatever you want to call it, jerk jitsu. Uh, I think more dick jitsu. But, and the reason is because if our goal is self-defense, then people are gonna do to you what they will instinctively do. The best thing for you to do is to just learn how to deal with it and how to defend it. Now, if you're doing sport jujitsu, then yes. I mean, jerk jitsu, dick jitsu really does play a role in it because you, when you do sport jujitsu, you're operating under the assumption of the existence of a rule set, right? So in tournaments, you can't do stuff like neck cranks. You can't do heel hooks up to a certain level. And after that, you can. Neck cranks, I don't think you can do at any level. You cannot obviously punch anybody. You can't strike them. You can't use your, your, your gi in certain ways. You can't tie your belt around somebody's neck. All those things that are outside of the rules of competitive jujitsu or competitive BJJ, uh, that's what people would say, oh, that's a dick move, you can't do that. Um, you can't slam somebody, if, if, I'm, if I'm in your guard and I stand up and you follow up with me, I can't slam you down, that's a dick move. So here's the thing, here's the way we look at it and you can, you can kind of do it any way you want because you know, you're in your own place, you know, it's just the way we do it. We try to prevent the effects of those dick moves as far as slamming. Just don't let yourself get slammed. Give up the closed guard or give up the choke or give up the triangle if you're in a position where you could be slammed. If your opponent lifts you off the ground, don't let it happen, let it go, right? Fight to live another day or live to fight another day, whatever the one is, yeah, live to fight another day. And you know, if somebody is in my guard and they put their forearm in my neck, how do I deal with it? Well, you can actually take somebody's back when they do that kind of stuff to you, right? As far as neck cranks, if you get caught, you get caught, just tap, right? Don't be upset and go, oh, wow, you know, you had, you know, you had me in a neck crank, uh, so that's why I had to tap. Well, no, you had to tap because you let, your, you let yourself get in a position of being cranked. So don't let yourself, you know, work on defending that, that situation from happening. Just don't let it happen. If somebody put slaps a heel hook on you, well, learn how to defend the heel hook. Anything that somebody does that could be a dick move. For instance, um, here's another one. When somebody chokes you and they don't have your neck, but they choke you across your jaw. And, you know, I've had people tap to that and say, yeah, well, you didn't have the choke, but you, you got my, you, you're going across my mouth or something. Well, it got you to tap, didn't it? Well, yeah. Okay, well, you have to deal with that as well. There's no real good jujitsu and bad jujitsu. You're just trying to learn to defend yourself. So, I kind of thank people for that because it reminds me, you know, like, oh, you know, I, that kind of woke me up. It's like, shit, yeah, I, I forgot to remember to deal with that. And that happens a lot with spastic people. They're not jerks, they're not dicks, they're just spastic. You know, they'll, they'll, they get into a point where they're fight or flight and they're, they move with a very sudden motion. And that sudden motion could be a punch to your face, it could be an elbow, it could be a knee to your groin, that kind of stuff. And by dealing with them differently rather than saying oh you dick you know you should you know that was a dick move you know elbowing me in the face well you should have not had your face in there right so i had this one one of my my kid students he had i think a broken nose at one point and uh he was healing right so it takes a long time for that to heal 
we were several months in uh, in the healing process and came back to class and another kid about his size, you know, they were they were sparring. This this one kid who had a broken nose is very aggressive in his jujitsu. So when he when he trains, he tends to create a matching level of aggressiveness from his opponents. So in this case, this, his opponent was also being aggressive. This kid, they're both kids, right? Um, the first one who had the nose was telling the first one before they started, hey, you know, I, my, my nose is healing, so don't put your elbow in there. Um, or don't, 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 you know, don't target my nose. Okay, fine. Well, what happened was when they were training, it got to a point where one of the, the other one, his elbow was, his forearm and elbow was going in the kid's nose. The one with the, with the healing nose got really upset, you know, was so angry, he was crying. So I talked to him about it and, and uh, I talked to him later on when he had cooled down. And I told him, I said, look, you need to be responsible for your own self. And that, that's your injury that you're, you're trying to heal, but you want to train. Well, that's fine, but you cannot put yourself in a situation to have them exploit it. So I said, show me what was happening. So he showed me what was happening. I said, first of all, when that arm is in your face and you can't get out, tap. Oh, okay, that makes sense. But here's the thing. The kid with the nose was actually on top trying to do a head and arm choke on the other one. The other one was defending it by putting weight on his elbow on the other, you know, on his face. So he's saying, well, he was, he was trying to hit my, my, he was trying to smash my nose, which I told him to stay away from. So my retort to that was, why was your face there anyway? If you try and lock a head and arm on somebody and you have a broken nose and, and, and the guy's trying to defend himself by, by getting his arm out of there and that arm is on your face, let it go, right? Get past it, go somewhere else. You don't need to win in that way. And, and by you winning there, and him doing that and you saying, well, I would have gotten you except for the fact that you targeted my face, which I don't believe he did, but, but to come back and say that, and then it's, you didn't win. You wouldn't have won because you have that injury. It's a limitation for you. So with me, if somebody goes and let's say they, they target Americana on one of my shoulders, I'm gonna tap. I'm not gonna say, boy, that was a dick move you doing that because you, you know I have bad shoulders. I need to protect my shoulders. I need to not be in that position to let them have an Americana on me, right? If that, if, that, if that hand goes back, I need to either get my elbow out of there so he doesn't have the leverage on me, or I just need to say, good job, you got it, and protect myself, and not say you're doing jerk jitsu by going after my, my shoulders. It's not their problem, it's mine, and I need to deal with it. If you have a sore rib, you have to then play in a situation, uh, in a, in a, get yourself in a situation where that rib won't be aggravated. If you have a sore knee, sore elbow, it doesn't matter. If you have some sort of limitation, you have to get yourself in a situation where you're not limited by it or you need to just not be where that injury can happen or where you can aggravate that injury. Long answer to your question, as far as the jerk jits and all that, to me, there's no such thing. Your opponents are gonna do what they're gonna do, and a person, if you get into a confrontation in the street or somebody who doesn't know jujitsu, they're gonna do what they instinctively do. And with regard to proper etiquette, you know, so we don't have that situation of being a jerk, yes. I'm not gonna to try to maliciously hurt an opponent. At the same time, if an opponent is trying to protect themselves, then in a way, because of what I'm doing to them, they're protecting themselves in a way that maybe hurts me, I know they don't mean to injure me, and I know they feel bad if they do injure me, but in reality, it's my fault for letting me get injured. You know, especially being a black belt, I need to know this stuff. And I try to teach my students along the way, okay, you need to watch out for this. When you're in this position, this is what can happen to you. So teach them how to deal with it. For instance, when, when, you have, when you're going for a clinch and your head is behind your opponent, head's on the, on, the, on the back over here, take your opponent down. If you disconnect your head, your opponent can come back and elbow you right in the face. Maybe your opponent, when you, he gets taken down, will try to get to his back because he knows he should be better, he should be on his back to be able to see what, what you're doing. And on the way down, you disconnect your head and he turns to go to his back and that help, elbow hits your face. Is that a jerk move? No. You should have left your head over there to protect it, right? That's the way I look at it. So if somebody gets hurt or they get, they get some kind of impact, and they go, ah, you know, and then, you know, they go, hey man, I'm sorry, man, I didn't mean that, complete accident. And then I don't tell the guy who did it by accident, don't do it again. Instead, I tell the guy who got hit, what happened, you know, I try to make a lesson of it, what happened to create the situation where you did get struck? 
oh, my head wasn't over there. That's correct. Now going forward, I wanna make sure you keep your head attached so that you don't get struck or the possibility of getting struck is no longer there. That's the way you work around it. Don't complain to your opponent that he did this or did that to you. Another thing too, when you're training, you're actually training, you're rolling or whatever, and you're trying to go for the submission. If somebody hits me in the wrong way, right? Elbow comes across, hits my face or hits my mouth and I'm bleeding, I suck it up. They may stop. Right? They may realize what they did and go, oh shoot, right? Ryan, are you okay? Yeah, just keep going. Don't stop, don't stop, let's go. Right? Because I have to condition myself to be in that situation where I may be in a, in a, in a point or a place where I don't wanna be, but I am now in a fight. And that guy is not gonna, you know, he can't, he's not gonna hit me and then I'm gonna, oh man, you hit me, oh man, that was bad, and the guy's gonna stop. No, he's gonna hit me again and again and again. So I have to learn how to deal with it. You know, Rusty just pointed out about being a victim. You know, I, I guess you could say, you could put it that way. If I, if I get struck by your accidental blow and I tell you, dude, that was a dick move, um, you know, don't do it again. You know, then that makes me the victim when in fact I should have just learned how to eat it and continue on or prevent it to begin with. Now, if I'm always getting my opponents to stop doing stuff to me, what will happen is I'm no longer in a realistic situation or, or as realistic as it can possibly be in a class, right? A class is not 100% realistic, but you want to get to yourself to the point where you can be as close to realistic as possible so that when real life does happen to you, you can deal with it. Like I was saying, when I get struck and it hurts, I keep going and I still try to win. What I've learned to train myself to do is let's say I get my shoulder is just on fire. Then I then try to move everything over to my good shoulder and I try to work from that side and try to use my injured body part as little as possible. But you can only get to that stage by always seeking to continue on, even after you've gotten injured. Now, sometimes you just get a level of injury that is just so bad that you just stop right away. Like when my knee went, Right, I just stopped. Uh, you know, what am I gonna do? You know, I, but if I were getting punched in the face while the knee happened, I would have to find a way to dig down deep and continue fighting even with the bad knee. Uh, but in class, there really was no reason for me to continue on, you know, fighting after I tore my ACL. It doesn't make any sense. But in a real life situation, you know, you have to keep going. So I hope that answered your question. In the meantime, I wanna thank you guys for subscribing to our channel, hitting the bell, and giving us, giving us a like. If you don't like it, that's fine too. Give us a don't like. You know, every once in a while I do get a thumbs down. That's fine, I don't care. I love you too. Um, be sure to hit our links, right? Our links help the channel out because, you know, Rusty spends a lot of time editing these videos and, you know, I try to set some time aside to give you, to answer your questions, give you as much content as I can to help you on your journey. So any help that you can give the channel is very much appreciated. You know, we've got the link to Kataro, we've got the link to the self-defense unit for Hicks and Gracie. Um, we've got Dave Kama's Patreon channel. Uh, that you can help us with as well. Also, we got a couple of Amazon links for some books or even some equipment that we use for our, for our videos and our filming and stuff. Anyway, any way you can help the channel is much appreciated, but by all means, if you're just enjoying it and don't wish to, that's fine as well. Anyway, take care, happy training, bye-bye now.